Django is a web framework written in Python. It provides many tools and libraries that help you do common tasks associated with web development. Examples of this are writing to databases, reading from them, user management, all sorts of awesome stuff. We're going to build today in five minutes a very simple application. It's going to be a very, very simple blog website, but it's going to work. We're going to make the assumption that you've already got Python installed in your system. First, let's create a virtual environment using Python and install Django into it. So you just run the virtual environment command here activate your virtual environment, and then install Django using pip. There we go. So now that Django is installed, we have access to the Django-admin command. We're going to use that to start our project. So I'm going to call this project my website, because it's going to be my website. So as you can see, that started my website. Uh, and if we look here, we, it's uh, created this project structure for us. Uh, so first, it makes the project root directory called my website. Everything we're going to do with Django lives in here. It's also given us the manage.py file, which is a way of controlling Django from the command line. Then inside our root directory, there's another directory called my website. For now, the only important files in this uh, my website directory are settings.py containing our settings and the urls.py containing our project's URLs and routing. Uh, this is how Django knows that, let's say, when we go to example.com slash blog slash post slash one, it leads to the first blog post. Uh, Django also comes with a development web server. Let's start this up. Go into your project root, start the web server using the manage.py command. So you're going to want to type python manage.py run server. By default, this web server runs on port 8000. So let's go to localhost on that port and confirm it is running. You should see the it works page with that little rocket ship. Uh, very cool. Django projects are structured as a project and apps. A project might contain many apps. For example, our website will contain one blog app, but it might also in the future contain other things we want to make. These apps can live in many projects, so we can publish our blog app and other people can put it in their Django projects. So let's create this blog app. To do that again, we're going to use the manage.py command, but this time we're going to say start app blog. And that's just going to create it for us. So that's going to create this directory structure here. The important files in here are models.py, are basically our database tables that combine, they're defined as Python classes and views.py. They take incoming requests from the user, run some Python logic and code on it, and then return a response. Let's just start with a really simple view just to confirm everything is working. Open up views.py and add the following code to it. From Django HTTP import HTTP response, that's going to allow you to return a HTTP response. And then views are just Python functions. They all take the request argument, so write that in there. Uh, and then we just want to return some HTML to the user. The user has no way of getting to that view, though. How does Django know to get to that view? So for that, we need a urls.py file. Uh, first, let's create this urls.py file in our blogs app. So I'm just going to touch it. And in this file, we want to add the following code. From django.urls import path, that's just to sell you the URL path. Uh, we want to import views from the current app. So because this is in blog, we are importing the blog's views. And then we want to make a URL patterns list, add path there like that and that that. So this path is here is saying anything that comes to me with no text, root it to the index view. We now need to point our project's root URLs to our new module. In my website, urls.py, make it look like the following. So we've got to add the include to the Django URLs there to include our blog's URLs. And that's what we're going to do. So that says anything going to blog, send it there. And then blog will then our blog's URLs will take over. So our previous URL, anything going to blog slash nothing, so just slash blog, goes to the blog index view. Cool. Let's check this works. So start the web server again and check it works by going to uh, localhost 8000 slash blog. And there we should see our HTML that we wrote earlier. We're now going to create our database. This will store our blog posts, but also things that Django provides us, like uh, users and everything else that needs to work. So by default, Django uses SQLite, which is fine for most projects, to be honest. But you can change if you want there, things like but I'm not going to do that. Run the python manage.py migrate command to make the database. So we can see it migrating there. That, that's basically applying any changes. And then let's have a quick look in that database, and we can see all the um, admin tables that have been created by Django. So now we've got the base database and tables, it's time to create ones for our blog. So we need to, in our blog models.py file, create the following. Uh, we're going to import the time zone library from Django just for later. And so each model is a class, so we're going to call it class post with the models.model argument, you just have to do that. Uh, and then title, that's going to be a char field. We're going to, we don't want any longer than 150 characters long of titles for whatever reason and our titles need to be unique right so this is all self-explanatory here and we want text it's just going to be a text field there you are and publish date that's models.date time field and default is timezone.now so that's why we imported the timezone library 
Um, so all this is doing is basically this will convert this into SQL commands to build the table. The Django RM will do that. There is many, many, many fields you can have and they're all listed on the Django website. But for now, this is all we need. So now we need to modify our database and tell Django that we want to include these models. So we need to do two things to do that. So first, let's go to our settings.py and add the blog to the installed apps list. We need to run the make migrations command. This will tell Django that we want to make changes to the database and then Django will prepare to make those changes. We can then apply those changes with the Python manage py migrate command. So now we can see the changes that we've made and we can also see that the and we can also see that the post model from the blog app has been applied to our database. Now that we have our database set up, we should start using the admin interface that comes with Django. So first we need to create our admin super user by using the create super user command. There we are. Add the appropriate information, yada yada. I'm just using the admin and password. Uh, I have to accept it. Uh, run the web server and navigate to slash admin and login. So as you can see, all we can do is modify users and groups. That's not very useful at the moment. So let's make it so we can edit our blogs app in the admin interface. Let's edit the file blog admin.py and add the following. So we need to import our uh, post model that we made and then we just need to do admin site register post. That's all you need to do, brilliant. So now if we go back to admin, we can access our blogs post model and play around with it. Let's add some, let's add two blog posts for now and just add some dummy text in. There we are. So if we look back at the blog view, the posts don't display with their titles. They display with their object number, which ain't great. So let's change that. So let's go back to our blog models.py and add this little magic thing in here. That basically says, what shall I call myself? I just want you to be your title. Done. So now let's refresh the admin page and yep, yeah, we can see our post titles have appeared. M looked much nicer. As a quick aside, let's see how we can view these posts from the command line using the Django ORM. So let's enter the Django shell using the manage pi shell command. We only, let's import our post model from our blog app and let's just view the post. So you do post.objects.all and you get a list of all your posts. Very cool. Uh, you can also filter the post by using post objects get and then let's put the ID in equals one. ID is an auto generated field created by Django. Uh, and we can also assign this to a variable and we can look at the text for example. So let's assign it to just P for post and then print the text. There we are. So that's how you view your models from the command line. Let's create our views for our blog. We just want our index page that displays all our post titles as clickable links. And then we also want a post page that shows the post title and the blog post. Let's edit our index view to display our blog posts using the same logic we learned in the shell. So let's change the index view. Let's import the post model. Uh, and let's do, let's just assign all the posts to a variable post and then return the response again. Uh, we're gonna, let, let's, Make sure that's getting all the posts okay. So I'm gonna add a print statement here to print the posts. I refresh the, the index page and then we see all those views. All the, the posts are returned correctly in our terminal. So we know we're getting the data correctly. So we now need to display these. And to do this, we need to take advantage of Django templating. So we've got to create a directory in our blog app called template slash blog. You've got to do this for um, namespacing purposes. So you can refer to them within Django as blog slash templates. Uh, and then within that file, create an index.html file. Uh, in that template, let's add the following code. So let's just add some simple HTML to say welcome. And then as you can see here, there's conditional logic to Django templates. So I'm gonna put in if posts. So if there is posts, um, you know, another list, so bullet points, and then for posts and posts, simple for loop, which loops the dictionary we pass it, list the post with the, using the post ID and then the posts title that, and then ally, end the for loop, and then if we don't have any blog posts, we just do an else statement here for, there are no blog posts. So what we've done there is link to a view and URL we have not created, so let's do that. So first of all, let's change our view so this works. Uh, and then we're gonna add, we're gonna get the, we're gonna assign our post to the context. Context is basically saying what you're gonna pass to the HTML template. With that context, we're gonna change the HTTP response to render. So we want to render a HTML template. We wanna send the request. We wanna use the template blog index.html and we wanna send the context to it. So that's all we're doing there. So we don't need that HTTP response import. Let's just remove that. So let's go back to our blog index page and refresh it. And there we go, the links appear. Very cool. Uh, but when we click on them, nothing happens, they fail. So let's edit our blog URLs file and add in this little thing here. So this int post ID is basically assigning any integer after slash post to the post ID variable that then we can pick up in our view and do stuff with. 
So, so now we need to create that view, that post view. Uh, so let's create this view. So I'm going to import get object or 404 from Django shortcuts. That basically says get this post if it exists and if not raise a 404. Uh, we want to get our post to display using the post ID variable that the URLs pass in. Uh, we want to put that post to display in context just as post uh, and then render the post.html template, which we do not have yet. So let's make that inside blog templates blog, make your post.html. Add the following to it with the header with the post title. I'm going to put it in, wrap the text in a div for now. Just put the text in there, whack it in. We also want the published dates. We've got the published date, so why not include it? So I'm going to put that in italics to make it look all nice. There we are. However, I did something wrong here. We've got to fix our urls.py. I forgot to add the left angle bracket in there. There we are, fix that. So we're going to go back and fix our link in our template. I didn't put slash blog in, so there we go, fix that. And now we can view this these blog posts. There we go. So click. Oh, it works. Look at that. Going through them. Click works. Click works. So that's basically Django. We have a really, really, really basic but functioning website. You can add posts in the admin interface and they'll automatically get displayed. It's a blog. There are many, many improvements and things we can do in the future here. So some things are like let the user write in Markdown in posts so they don't have to write HTML in the Django admin interface. You can style the blog, allow users to add posts in the front end, behind the login maybe. So you can even use like a visual editor then. Allow drafting of posts. So that would that would involve adding a checkbox to your model, which is a Boolean field in Django. Uh, and then you just add some logic to say if the post, if that checkbox is ticked, don't display it. It's in draft. You can do so many things with Django. So go ahead and make your own project or use, use this one as a launch pad. I've linked to the code in the description below. Go ahead, make it your own add improvements to it. Yeah, go ahead, make your own project. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe for more. If you like this kind of video, let me know. Bye.